which leads me to the so-called intellectual discussion on the 100 reasons why evolution is stupid. This was what was brought to me as the ultimate evidence that evolution is wrong. I saw it. I forced myself to watch it because I knew I'd be pissed watching it, and I was. Now, this probably goes against what I just said about you need to be detached. But the reason why I was pissed wasn't because he was bringing facts. It was because it was obvious that this guy does not know shit about science. And worse, put himself to made it look like he did. Put on a suit, talked about he taught biology for 15 years, so he knows everything about it. Look, guys, just because you teach biology for 15 years does not mean that you know everything about the evolutionary process. For one thing, Einstein himself said, if we knew everything about science, we wouldn't be calling out research. Now would it? Well, would we? Science is an ongoing thing about research. You don't come up with ultimate answers. Only religion comes up with an ultimate answer for something. Science doesn't. It just simply says, this is what we think works. So what plus, think works based on what we currently know. Plus, you guys really need a serious education on the education process in this country if you think that a teacher is an ultimate expert on something. What a teacher does, and I'm not trying to discount all the years that they have to go through in order to get the teaching license, but According take it from it, someone... It, it also depends on the, on the state. It depends on the state. And the time period. But really, even after that, they could spend a whole lot of time on the subject, but it also depends on where they were teaching that subject, because let's put it this way. We should ask if this biology teacher was teaching in grade school or if he was teaching in college. That's a big difference. If you're teaching in grade school and even in high school, you just simply giving them, like, all right, here's the textbook, here's the list of stuff that you need to know out the textbook, here's your test. The guy probably knows bare, like, the basic stuff, maybe a little bit advanced stuff on biology, but not much, because everything he needs to teach is already laid out for him in a textbook. High school biology was, uh, here's the taxonomical system, let's learn it. Species. Genus. <laughs> there is no actual learning. When you are actually learning something, that means you're getting your hands dirty. That means you're actually looking at the theories and going, can we make this work? And then dive into it yourself. Why do you think we were dissecting frogs and all this stuff in high school in the first place? It was to give you an idea of what it takes to be so a scientist. Well, yeah, you know, chopping up things is fun. Now, if you're teaching it in college, it's a different thing because now you're challenging the students to come up with theories on their own. They're not just supposed to learn the material. They're supposed to contribute to it. I am willing to bet... Well, I'm broke. But I'm willing to bet money... <laughs> that this idiot who gave this discussion was not teaching in a college level because someone like me who didn't major in it was able to disprove his crap and what was that thing about rivers? okay apparently one of his big proofs I gotta look this up um because th th this is just oh god damn um this is this is some big deal about the Colorado River and that the only river in the world that was made without a delta first of all that's not true um, and said that it's, it formed the Grand Canyon, but a river can't flow without a delta. Um, where did he get that shit from? One, a delta is just a series of silt deposits at the mouth of a, uh, at the mouth of a national river. You got the Mississippi Delta, you got the Nile Delta, other famous deltas like that, like the Ganges Delta, things like that. All it is is just the river carrying soil down, and it hits the ocean currents and backs up, and forms little islands and things like that. That's all that a delta is. You can have a mouth of something without a delta. And all it has to do is meet some body of water large enough to collect its flow. The ocean is one. Lakes, we're, we've got Lake Michigan here. It's got several rivers coming into it. Now yes, Lake Michigan is really pretty much an inland sea, but it's a fresh water thing, so they call it a lake. But still, it, it's it's not the ocean, technically. Now, the Colorado River, I don't know exactly where the source is. Somewhere up in the Rocky Mountains, you can look it up. Now, you can go to Wiki or Britannica or any of these places. Yeah, Wikipedia. USGS. Yeah, Ben, yeah, just yeah, look survey. at the... Um, I was just about to say, it's just basic geology. Look this shit up. Don't depend on some evangelist in a suit, which is what this fucktard is. Go and look... I do happen to know that the Colorado River empties into the Gulf of California, which is which is sort of considered part of the Pacific Ocean. And in fact, if you look at the state border of of California, 
You know, it's got that little boom right thing. And at the bottom there, just before it hits Mexico, there's that squiggly area. That's the Colorado River making this, making this it's piece way. of water. Um, so, yeah, the, the, the Colorado River flows into a body of water, a large body of water. And it formed the Grand Canyon by, as it's moving downhill, it's carrying a lot of water. It eats into this soft sandstone, or relatively soft speaking, in terms of geological terms, and it eats away at it. <laughs> and, I mean, basically, like we, I was discussing this with somebody else who was basically saying that where the hell do rivers come from? Um, like you said, they, they, if you don't realize that rivers, first of all, a river isn't anything major or special. A river is just simply a body of water flowing from one place to another. And in nature, even Taoists in China realize this, things go from high places to low places. All forms of water start from the sky. Mountains happen to be covered in snow. Snow melts, flows down into the ground. There's your freaking river. If you is want to this see the example of what rivers are, rivers are a collection of all those small runoffs mm -hmm. of water when it rains. If you look at, go out into the street, or if you really want to see it in you know, nature, go out into a field somewhere <laughs> and see what happens when it rains. Either the, if it's flat, the water just soaks into the ground, goes into goes into the, the aquifer, and travels out that way. If there are, if it's if it's hilly or at all has various elevation levels, what you'll see is that you will see little rivulets, little flows of water. And what happens is that if if those if two of those flows of water meet, they make a larger flow of water. <laughs> and what a river is, it, and eventually those make a creek, or a, and then and or a stream, and then these streams flow into rivers, which are large flows of water, <laughs> and then no, no, and, I, you'll and, and, and then those large flows of water go somewhere. They get rid of the water that's in the area. It's all part of the water cycle. You remember <laughs> that from back in grade school or hopefully at least middle school. <laughs> it's the water cycle. It evaporates, goes up into the clouds, rains back down. <laughs> Alright, like we're harping on this too much. We Sorry, really go up. I mean if guys if you can stomach bullshit and I invite everyone who's watching this video right now to please do this. Look up the one hundred reasons why evolution is stupid. It's on YouTube in three parts. I invite everyone to watch this, especially my subscribers, if you're watching this, please do this and take a notepad and if you know anything about science, start jotting down all the things he gets wrong. Completely wrong! I will start on a couple of them. Um, the no information thing, we already discussed that earlier. That's bullshit! <laughs> there is new information being on there. Have you ever fucking heard of random mutations, for God's sakes? Then he's using entropy, basically saying that how life can um, how life can become more complex when entropy causes more disorder and causes systems to naturally break down. Um, have you heard of the law of thermodynamics, asshole? Part of it is said that um, the, um, it's a well-established pr principle, and I'm reading this off of something right now. <laughs> I'll admit that because I, you know, I, I just knew it was bullshit. But basically, part of the rules of thermodynamics is that entropy is a naturally occurring thing. Things are constantly breaking down. And it will eventually lead to chaos out of order. But an order does come from that chaos, from the same goddamn force of entropy. Have you ever heard of the common form, the destroyer is also the creator? You see it a lot of times in more religious type of themes or philo philosophical themes. Hell, even in fantasy books. You destroy something. Hell, whenever you're creating something, you're destroying something else in order to create it. That's the way nature works. Hell, for us to survive, to create new cells, we eat other things, thereby destroying them, but adding to ourselves to create our own life. And it's, and it's very tasty. I mean, god damn how stupid is it? 